I don't know if it's actually reading and homework because you cannot do it and still come and still immerse yourself in it. You don't have to read it, right? Which is what I've told people on the phone. And so um, I think there's a, a reluctance to open, right, perhaps. And that maybe some people aren't ready. And so, but other people are, maybe they'll just come and go. Who knows, right? But we're going to keep on going. And tonight, last week we did a, a mini, um, kind of a mini visioning, but not a real visioning, even though that was in your workbook. This week we're going to do a visioning. We're going to also do the beginnings of doing treatments, like the practitioners do, but anybody can do a treatment. But it's, they're not the sole priority, or propriety of being a licensed practitioner. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do it, and anybody can do it well, right? And so that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. It's fun if you're a licensed practitioner, but it's not necessary. In fact, it's one of the scarier things you do as a licensed practitioner. And so at least I have found it to be true. So before, instead of opening with a treatment, which is standard for the Centers for Spiritual Living, what I'd like to do this time it's just center. We can turn the lights down. We don't have to do that. No, the lights are the Oh, those lights. We don't have to do that either. <laughs> but this time I would just like us to center. Just kind of rub your hands in front of you, like get them warm and just shake it out and relax. And just breathe and be here now. Center here. Just take a few moments. As you center, focus on your intent for this evening. What is your intent? So come back to center, and together we'll say, it's so 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 like that. Did you like that? Did you like that? That was awesome. Brand? Yeah. Good. That's just a nice new way of starting something, isn't it? Instead of someone here proclaiming the truth for everyone, it's kind of nice to find your own truth, I think, in that moment and, and set your intent. And so um, that's what visioning is all about, is finding your own truth around that vision, whether you're visioning for the centers for spiritual living or you're visioning for your own, you know, your own propriety or your own motivation or something for your, for your future. It's finding your true self and finding that center before you move forward and start asking yourself certain questions. That's what I've learned by being a part of the visioning circle. It doesn't really matter what we vision for. What matters to me is that when I get to that core, I know the truth. And, um, and that truth expresses itself in the vision in my mind, which is different for everybody in the visioning circle, and at the same time, intricately connected on many, many points. It's amazing, just amazing how, if you wanted to say that we have visioned in some of the things that are actually happening at the center right now, we did. By, we, during our visions, you can read the transcripts of them and go, wow, we can see a clear progression in things that are happening right now 
from things that we were visioning on over the past year, just the future of the Centers for Spiritual Living. So we're going to do more of that tonight. And um, there are five questions in the book, and I realized I didn't know that there were page numbers, but Breezy just pointed them out to me. So on page um, 20, I have it delivered, so I can't read it. 23 is the spiritual practice for visioning. So we're going to walk through that. We're also going to talk about the, some of the reading that we did because I really like Mark ne Nepos. I really like, I remember now, we're just going to call him Mark. I really like Mark's reading for this evening. It, I think that's an impressive book and every time I read it, it gets me going. So, um, and we're also going to look at some stuff from the Foundation book. So, um, did you all get a chance to read the Spiritual Practice of Visioning that was for last week? Mm -hmm. All right. Did anything stand out to you about that? What do you mean? Yeah. Anything? Um, I didn't understand it. Okay. If, um, if you didn't understand it at all, like you... No. Was there I, something I mean, specific? When I, take, when I take this, what is God's highest vision mm -hmm. or perfect idea of itself, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and it, coming at it from different directions. And it isn't until now that I think what that means is that, what do I think God is? And therefore, the qualities, then my answer to that question would be qualities such as health, happiness, uh, oneness, indivisible, Right. Um, but that's how that helps in visioning, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was on the visioning court in Colorado, mm -hmm. and I think the way they've kind of, kind of written this, it's kind of not, it's not written well in that, in that regard. <laughs> um, what it should say is the facilitator is going to ask a, something for you to vision about. They usually give you a subject. So like you might vision for this center, and then you would go within, and then you would ask the question, what is God's highest vision or perfect idea of itself for Centers for Spiritual Living? Okay. Yeah. Does that make more sense? Yeah. Right. right. There, is, yeah. there is always okay. like, it's like, what is for what? What is the highest yeah. vision? Right. Or something because, blah, blah, blah. because we, at the visioning core, we already knowing that we're centered and that we are that manifestation of the divine. And so the question is, what is the highest vision of the Centers for Spiritual Living? We always do the highest good. Pardon? The, the highest good is always in that phrase somehow. Highest vision, highest good. Yeah. yeah. Or, or fill in the blank. It wouldn't have or to be Centers for blank. Spiritual Living. It could be for you mm -hmm. or for... Yeah. It. Right. How do you turn this thing down? Mm -hmm. Like that? Um, if it is gets it too, too cold, Cheryl, you're welcome to turn it yeah. back up. Is it too hot for you? I'm dying up here. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, I'm not. That was. <laughs> um, I am being reborn. <laughs> you're on fire. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I've had this energy all day about getting to this class. I feel sorry for my students at the college because they get a lot of this, actually. It's kind of funny. <laughs> um, just a tangent, I was giving an interview this morning to a, another newspaper and, and she said, is there anything that you would say to someone reading this article? And I thought, gosh, you know, principle is not bound by precedent. And then I was like, oh my God, it's infiltrated everywhere. Thomas Troward is just, science of mind is me. Like I have become it. It's it kind of suck you in until they get you. It, it is. Um, <laughs> someone accused me of being part of a cult um, about a week and a half ago. Did I tell you that? No. Oh, you're not. A, and, and and they were like, you know, I'm really concerned about you over the last couple of years. You've gotten more and more involved. You spend a lot of time there. Now you're teaching for them. You give money. And and I, I said, I said, honestly, are you accusing me of being Christian? <laughs> and she was like, no, I'm concerned about the Centers for Spiritual Living. I said, it sounds like Christian behavior. Going every week, volunteering.
volunteering in the middle of the week, teaching Sunday school, and be giving my money? I don't know. I said, I think it's just a really strong spiritual practice, actually. I'm really, I'm, I'm good. Trust me. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be here. I've made many decisions in my life, and that would be one of them. I could leave. But I don't want to. And in fact, as you know, I'm getting my ministerial degree starting in the summer. I'm excited about that, too, because I visioned about that. And that's partly why I, I put off that until after I talked with them. Because that's, that's about to manifest, and that's about to, the steps are falling into place, just as I imagined it. And for me, this has happened a couple of times. And I think it's probably happened for each one of us, where we've really wanted something and we've set a goal, and maybe we've thought about it, even though we might have some low self-efficacy and feel like we can't achieve the goal, we keep plodding forward anyway. I'm never going to get there, keep plodding forward, you know? And, um, and that's what happened to me in my PhD, and that story is seriously, I, I listen to it, and it's amazing. And um, how, how I envisioned myself walking over the platform and being hooded by a woman that um, didn't turn out to be my advisor, was never on my committee. And, um, and I thought when I was given my first advisor, I, I was like, no, no, can't be Judith because I know it's Lonnie who hoods me. And that was five years before I graduated. And then um, Judith decided to move to England, and I, and I said, okay, well, fine. Judith is my advisor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Judith moved to England, and I thought, I'm going to get Lonnie. So we're three years into my doctorate. No, I got Deb. Well, <laughs> Deb um, was a, a colleague and a friend as well now as my advisor, but she'd recently been diagnosed with a, with a, with a, a life life-threatening illness, and so um, at right before I graduated, she decided to step down. And, and I was like, I'm getting ready to graduate in like three weeks. And um, now I don't have anyone putting me in my chair. The chair of the department has come onto my committee, and I thought, Patsy's not supposed to hood me. Something else is wrong here. Something's wrong. And um, the day that I went to graduation, Lonnie, Guna were there, a doctor Guna were there, it came up to me and she said, Catherine, it would be my highest honor if you would allow me to hood you. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's true, these things actually happen. Hold fast. And I knew it was her because she was, she was she Lankan and she was a little bit shorter than I was. And I knew in my vision, in this dream, this vision I had, I had to kind of scoot down so that she could put the hood over my head, and she did. And um, we have a picture of that moment, and, and all it was—it's exactly like my vision. Cool. And so it can happen, and it does happen over and over and over. I want one more story because we can vision about pretty much anything. And so this is the thing: I've asked you what your intent is. I've asked you to set goals for what you would like to see as this class unfolds. I've asked you to, last year we, had, we were talking about what is it you would like to manifest in your life, all of those things. It can be as simple as I want a cup of coffee. So um, I was going to a party on Saturday and I thought, I want a cup of coffee. So um, I'll go into Ingalls and buy the food for the party and I'll get $40 cash and then I'll stop at the um, Starbucks on the way out. Okay, so I have had one of those weird, crazy days, just where I wasn't real focused, and I get to Ingalls, and I buy the stuff, and I say, oh yeah, I want $40, and I hit four, and the zero on the green button, which is enter, <laughs> as you know, and um, I, but I didn't realize that, and then she gives me $4 back, and I'm like, I wanted 40, and she goes, Sorry. Since <laughs> so, you hit the wrong button, and I'm like, obviously. And so I was like, whatever. I've got, I, I can get it on the Starbucks app on my phone. And so I get over to Starbucks, and I don't have any money on the app. And so I say, I'd like a cup of coffee, and um, I'd like you to put $20 on my Starbucks app. She's like, okay. 
And so she kind of fumbled around, and we finally got the $20 on my Starbucks app. I just assumed that they pulled the coffee off the app when they put on the $20. And I'm walking away, and she's going, ma'am, you need to pay for your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you didn't take it off the app. And she was like, no, I'm sorry, I, I didn't. And I thought, oh, how much is it? She goes, it's $3.59. <laughs> So I had four dollars. <laughs> That's how that happened. So it can unfold in many, many ways is what I've learned from that. I don't really need forty dollars in cash in my pocket. All I really wanted was a cup of coffee. Right? And that's what happened. So that's what we're doing. So it goes to what is the highest and best good for your intention? It is what must you become to facilitate the vision or to be that vision? If we use to, what do you need to do to facilitate the vision? Right? What do you need to change about yourself that you may need to change? Yes. I just want to be sure the starting point. We have an intention, a concern, or a goal, or something in our mind, and we're starting with something. Correct? We're not just sitting here as a blank screen trying to. Yeah, no. So we have an intention, is what you're telling us. Yes. We start with a concern or a goal or an aspiration. Right. And then is the whole concept we're being open to divine presence, to what message or what what inclination we receive? That's, that's what yes. visioning Through is about? Yes, through a series of questions. Yes. Well, in my mind, that reminds me of traditional Christianity where you're seeking God's will. What you know, people who pray, they pray for God's will in their life, and they feel if they're in God's will, they're doing what they should be doing. Is this analogous? Are we similar here? Yeah, I would say in many ways it is. It's the same kind of. It is. There's no begging. Seeking. There's no beseeching. It's no, just no. simply waiting what on the is Lord, the highest vision. Waiting right. on the Lord is the way right. I was brought up. We're all like dealing God with the same says. divine. Entity. Of course, of yeah. course, but it's. I just want to make sure this is what we're. It is. In line with okay. how, is that how does that feel? Is that okay? Yeah, it's great. Oh, I'm just I, I was kind of when I first read it, well, what are they talking about or, or what is this? I, I didn't know the starting point. How do you get this to start? Is for me was which I haven't gotten to yet. I was going to wait until we got to the end of the steps, but let's jump back to that then. Um, we I was going to ask, do you want to do something as a group where we hold the same intention? We can decide. Mm -hmm. We can work with the Centers for Spiritual Living, we could work with, I don't know, we could work with the Garden Club, you know, that all is in right, perfect order. We could, you do this, um, That's what I was thinking. School. You know, that everything unfolds according to there divine plan, and we hold that vision together, or we, we could hold our own. It's up to you, but we need to decide, so that we're all That sounds good to us. What sounds good to the garden you? club thing? The garden club. Okay. And 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 so when we're thinking of the garden club, are we thinking of expansion or we, what? Are, what? Just the direction for it to go, because right now it looks like there's going to be a change in leadership. Okay. So focus for. Okay. So just that it's in divine and right place and perfect alignment. Does that? Does everyone agree with that? Is that good? Okay, uh, my question is, is that the Garden Club for the center? Or the yeah, it's for taking care of the grounds here. We were Bill or Asheville or something. No, it's for taking care of the grounds here. Okay. The National Hiking Club. <laughs> okay. Everyone in agreement with that? We'll, we'll just do a little visioning and then we'll share after what that is. So we'll ask for the highest vision for the centers. Center for Spiritual Living Garden Club Asheville. The Center for Spiritual Living Asheville, because we've done that too, and we've all had, we just said Center for Spiritual Living, and we had these huge global visions that were different than when we never went to Asheville, just even though. And then, um, what must I do or learn or change to become part of that vision? What must I release? What must you release in order for that vision to unfold and manifest each of us? And um, even if you don't have a tangible connection to it, there is something that we all do. We all open to that possibility. And um, what must you embrace? And then is there any other information in this moment? 
Okay? Okay. So we, we often start with some music, which I have, but um, I've got Jennifer Bresson with me, like I promised. But Nancy, however, is not here and didn't pull the Well, the bin box is right over there. Is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't even look for one when Nancy was in here. The bookstore has one. So on her. <laughs> the bookstore has one. I'm just going to bring it up to you so you can control it. Okay, thank you. So we'll listen to that. We'll center again. Um, we won't be doing a treatment to open the visioning. That's not the way this center does it. We do a treatment at the beginning of the gathering, but not at the beginning of the treatment of the visioning. So we'll just center, take some time, and then I'll two minute increments. Um, I'll ask the same question twice, so it's four minutes for each question. You'll just allow your self thought process to flow it free, flow free freely flow, and then I'll ask the next question. You can take notes in between, we often do. and I think I mentioned last week, recorded this in the temples in Malta with um, Linda Tillery and uh, some other people. Some of you might know Linda Tillery. Can you hear it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. As we gather here and we breathe with the breath of this CD and the music as it pours through us, ask yourself, what is the highest vision that you hold for the Center for Spiritual Living, Asheville's Garden Club? What is the highest vision that you hold for the Garden Club, for the Center? Thank <laughs> you. 
to a different track and that's a little, yeah. that's a something that can happen. So just center again. Distractions happen all the time. Just breathe. Now I'm turning it down. We're just going to let it go. Just breathe and focus. We can pick up with the highest vision for just another moment. We can take notes. you hold that vision in your mind, what must you become to facilitate that vision? What must you become to facilitate that vision? Must you release? What must you release?
first died with wigs. Must I embrace for this vision of the Center for Spiritual Living? What must I embrace? Center for Spiritual Living Action. any other information that I need to know at this time? Just center, collect your thoughts, you breathe. And when you're ready, just come back. People ready for some light? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
this one or two? Yeah, this one. Is that good? That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Not for the people under it, I imagine. <laughs> so what we do, then what we do is um, we share what some of the visioning was. So for the first one, was the highest vision. What did some people have? Because we write these down. Breezy. Uh, more volunteers with experience and regular work days. Okay. And some people may not have seen anything or felt anything, but you may have had not not felt, but you may have had similar feelings going on, but you may not have something specific. And some people see in bright, vivid colors and in detailed, um, detailed visions, experience and a place to work. No regular work days. Regular work days. Anyone else want to share? Be uh, easy to maintain, unobtrusive, and low maintenance. What was the first one? Easy to maintain. Okay. And low maintenance. And what was the third? I don't know. Is it unobtrusive or inobtrusive? I'm not sure. Pardon? Anyone else? Yeah. yeah. Helpers to show up that love and honor mother. Helpers that show up that love and honor the earth. Is that good? Okay. A, a, a good plan. Permacul a, permaculture. Pardon? Plan. A good permaculture plan a with plan. Uh, more than enough funding. Did you say funding? Yeah. <coughs> Anyone else that has something? Yeah, Fran. Participants need to enjoy the work. The participants need to enjoy the work. Very similar in some of these. So there needs to be um, enjoyment. Anyone have it? Yeah. Um, first, I, I thought vegetables, but then I thought, well, that's me saying that. So I waited until you asked it again. And um, what came to me then was was birds and having more flowers and things that are things that are fragrant because these aren't exactly the most beautiful army barracks looking buildings and having <laughs> more pretty stuff around um, would be awesome. Fragrant bringing the birds and the bees and everything. And, and the butterflies. And having, butterflies. Having some edible, the butterflies and having some edible stuff. I mean, that was coming to my mind, too. Okay, so birds, pretty and fragrant, right? Edibles. We have uh, apples. No, <laughs> beyond that. Strawberry. Oh. Strawberry. Edible. Anyone else have something? Yeah. Um, I got the sense that uh, maybe two co leaders. Two people sharing the responsibility. Okay, Share, shared effective. responsibility. Two co's. Yes. I have loving volunteers, beauty, um, ease, joy in the work, which came up twice, I think, and the hot, hot pink kept, kept coming up. Right? Hot pink. <laughs> Who knows? Hot pink, lo loving volunteers, you said? Uh huh, enjoying the work. Similar to, to what some other people have said? Okay. An enjoyment of the work? Yes. Uh, whenever I do things like this, I often have real 
issues seeing anything coming to mind, but I it flickered. I, I had a very, very strong flickering vision of raspberry bushes mm. and Sunday and a bowl at Sunday celebration next to the peanut butter um, <laughs> raspberry <laughs> jelly from edibles. Um, yeah. Things. Edible. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm the I'm just the opposite, and I see everything. So, I I, I was my brain would started planning out in full color, you know, <laughs> giant pots and everything everywhere. And outside there, man, I'm still trying to get out the engineering factor of making the living roof. Right. Um, so okay, so let's stay with it and and try not to have a lot of like external comments. Let's stay with the visions that we're having. And, and keep that because when we're done, you're going to be amazed. You can already see how some of this is overlapping, but by the end, it's it's pretty uh, exciting. I think. I guess that's why I keep doing it. So let's move on to the second one. What must I become to assist or facilitate that vision? What must I become? And I'm writing kind of big, so we're going to put number two here in abbreviations. What must I become? Did anyone have something? Breezy. I'd put more dedicated. Dedicated. Dedication. Practical. Anyone else? What did you have for number two? What must you become? Yeah, Mike. The bearer of the raspberry bushes. <laughs> bearer. Bearer, bearer of the raspberries. Of the raspberries. <laughs> that mean you're bringing them? Yeah. <laughs> There's several great the spots. <laughs> but this is the important word there that you're that you're the bearer of it, that you're representing it. Yeah. Anyone else? Like yeah. Available, passionate, and interested. Well. Wow. out here in threes, it seems, engaged, <laughs> uh, appreciative, and supportive. Yeah. Anyone else you want to just ask? Yeah, just said open to highest and best. Open, be open to the highest and best. Okay. Anyone else have anything you want to share about what you may need to become to facilitate that vision? No? Um, what must I release? Was there things that came up for you when, you, when we were talking? What must I release? The need to know how it will happen. Okay. Specifically, for me, that was like related to money, so I have all these big ideas of flowers, and then I immediately think, well, who's going to buy the flowers? I would certainly buy them all if I had the money, but then my sister's house would be full of flowers, and that hasn't happened, so. I don't know where the enough button is, so. It's uh, the slider on the left. <laughs> so, um, okay. So the need to not know how it's going to happen. What else? Uh, my ideas of <clears throat> what I think a garden should be like. Mm -hmm. uh, which is what uh, mm -hmm. Amanda said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had the exact same answer. <laughs> Okay, and who said that I had the exact same answer? I did. I had limited idea of what it, quote, should be. Mm -hmm. 
what should be. That word comes up a lot in this one, I think. That's why I underline it, because I underline it in my own notes, because never should yourself, right? But that's what I need to release, should be. What else? Yes? Focusing on the current conditions. A focus on current conditions. In what way? Um, looking at what currently exists okay. and not moving beyond. Not I see. seeing the possibility. Right. Focus, I see. Focusing on, on current conditions. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else feel like there was something you needed to release for the Garden Club, for the Center for Spiritual Ashram? I like this. This is good. Okay. So what must you embrace? Even if you're not a member of that circle, there's something that we all must embrace in order for these things to come forth. What must you embrace? Yes? A sense of belonging and a sense of community. Okay. <laughs> They're higher at the college. And I'm like, oh, like that at the college. Belonging in community. That one kind of came up for me under what, is there any other information I need in this oh. moment? Given okay. That it was inclusion. So for uh, this one, it's inclusion? No. Well, okay. I have for this one. Well, so what, this what one about this one? What must this I embrace? And then we'll get to that. Uh, yes. Uh, again, like Dave said, community involvement and participation. Okay. Silence. Pardon? Oneness. Oneness. Yes. Anyone else? What you? Community. Community. What must I embrace? We continue to embrace our sense of belonging and community. Good. Yes? I had a weird one. I had a picture in my mind of the cover for the book, or a sound book, open at the top, and the title was there. Okay. Thought, what the devil does that mean? And so I tried to think about it, and maybe it just means bigger vision. Maybe. At the top. And what was that songbook? I'm sorry? What was that from, a songbook? No, no, it's a book, open at the top. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's Ernest Holmes. Oh, it's, oh, oh, yeah, it is Ernest, that's right. <laughs> 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 it's some kind of jazz book. <laughs> some kind of thing. Okay, what about any other information that you needed in this moment to facilitate the vision? Was there any other information needed? Yes, this is where I guess the mind would go. It talks about inclusion of all um, drawn to the center, welcomed and diversity and community. Okay. <coughs> um, what's, what spaces are available that are usable on the property? Okay. And, um, you know, like uh, what could or should go here and what works best with this and that. Okay, does that cover that? Location of space, is that okay? Okay. Design, would you prefer something? What's, you know, what, what space is available? Okay. Yes? This is where I had to be open and receptive in step five, to be open and receptive. Okay. Oops. You already put it there. <laughs> I guess I'm blurred. <coughs> it's weird, but it, what came up is know that spirit is in the field. Know that spirit is in the field. God's spirit. <laughs> well, I like that. Uh -huh. I like that. Uh -huh. Field slash garden club. 
Anyone else have anything about um, additional information? Did anyone have any colors? Anything like that kind of come through? Yeah. Well, at the very beginning, I had all these patches of colorful flowers waving back and forth in the sunlight. Okay. And all the beds were neat and immaculate. So it was really orderly. <laughs> that, was, that was the first, that's the very first for me. <laughs> no, I, I had a lot of us. Did anyone else? Yeah, Fran. Purple and lavender. What's that? Purple and lavender. Purple and lavender came up for you. Was that A R or E R? A R. A R. Okay. Anyone? Anything else? Any other colors that came? But it was hot pink over there that I... Uh -huh. That hot pink again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you, someone else had their hand. Oh, Drew. Every flipping color of the rainbow and full. Every spectrum. color. Yeah, every, every color. Every green, every sunflower, every... Let's just make a rainbow. There you go. <laughs> Some neat and orderly in shape, some bushes of edibles, some things like that. Okay, I mean, folks. And pots. We're and staying centered in here while and people coming are out and, and everywhere. Okay. Some in big so everything. plot gardens. Just some in, expansive. Yeah. Some in, some in big pots around, you know, ornamental okay. pots. I mean, just everywhere. Okay. Anything else from anyone? Okay. So. We've got a lot up there. Mm -hmm. And what we would try to do is not really, not, we wouldn't really be drawing connections until we sat around and ate, right? And then we'll be going, oh my gosh, look at that. And we would end with a treatment. And so, um, would you like to end us with our treatment today? And then we'll talk no, more right about it. No, right now. <laughs> Then we're going to talk, we're going to end the vision, and we'll go into discussion, and then we'll break. All right. Does that sound good to folks? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's just breathe in that one power, that one presence that is right here, right now, where we are. And I know that God is the absolute alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the energy, the force, the driving aspect of life. It is the power and presence back of all life. It moves, lives, and has its very beingness in, through, and around every aspect of life. The chair that I'm sitting in, the floor that supports my feet, every breath that I take, every molecule in my body is an absolute God molecule. Everything that I look at, touch, taste, smell is God. So therefore, in this moment, I am an absolute living manifestation of God, as is everyone in this room. Every person within the sound of my voice, every aspect of this building, every aspect of CSL, Centers for Spiritual Living in Asheville, is an absolute manifestation of the one mind of spirit in action. And so I know that right here and right now, in this perfect moment, this visioning, this Class, every aspect of what we are doing is unfolding perfectly because God is moving through it perfectly. Expressing itself into the world as this class, as our visioning, as the highest vision for the Garden Club right here and right now in Asheville. I see it unfolding perfectly. I see God moving and breathing itself in ways that we can't comprehend the perfect volunteers stepping forward, the perfect, absolute, beautiful garden blooming and growing as God paints it into existence. And I give great and joyous thanks to remember that this is the absolute truth for the Garden Club. And I release my word into the absolute law of mine, knowing that as I do, it is done. And together we say, and so, so it is. is. That's lovely. You have quite a gift. Oh, I love listening yes. to her give a treatment. That's why I keep looking at you. <laughs> you can do it. No <laughs> so 
um, would you like to break and come back and discuss it, or would you like to say a few things now? It's up to you, always. Okay, then let's do a few things and then we'll break and we'll leave this, let this go. So, um, how do people feel about that process? Some people have mixed, mixed feelings about it, but um, it's, it's a process that I, I believe actually works and is very close and resonates with treatments, which is why I wanted to do them both in the same evening, because there's a sense of oneness with, with the divine nature of all things as we go forward in these visioning processes. So, um, does anything stand out to you about our collective consciousness. Well, I think it was a lot more powerful doing it as a group than our individual things, and I think that that people contributed that might not necessarily really have thought about gardening. They had different things come to mind, and um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Did you have your hand up, or you were just... I was scratching okay. my head. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I, I just felt like it really focused everybody on one objective, and it just came together. So everybody's sort of like on board, instead of scattered, we're all sort of like on it. Right. I agree. For me, it, the group thing made it very powerful and energetic. I... I, I, I anticipate vision, it, doing it individually, for me, there always being doubt and uh, how's this gonna happen, and, but with all of us, it, it, it almost feels like we are now an unstoppable force, and you know, it's like, all right, let's go, force. Right. Um, kind of thing. So <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really very cool. Along with this one. <laughs> it does feel like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Be there was also a sense of, as I'm looking at it now, <clears throat> of wholeness and completeness. It's not one-sided. There's, it just, it's, it's much bigger than the individual things. It's a whole. Right. Right. Anyone else? Yeah. There's a lot of love up there. There is. And it's palpable. Yes. Yeah. Something else I really like about it is what I like this step because this is what stops me. You know, what do I need to release? And and when we go to talking about treatment, it's essentially the same thing. We need to be able to recognize that which in ourselves that's blocking the vision of what we want. And so um, I love this step. It's kind of like, oh wow, I'm holding all this judgment, or I'm holding all of this resistance, or I'm holding all of this kind of like ideas of what it should like, and it's not what it's like. And so, am I moving way too much? No. no. Oh, okay. And so, um, I love that step, because as soon as I go, what do I need to release, and I can acknowledge it, I can move on. And so we bring it, what is the vision? I know what I want. I know what I need to do. And now what do I need to release in order for that to manifest is really powerful in my mind. And so um, I really appreciate you all taking the time to explore this. And let's take a, a 10 minute break, come back at 10 after. So really it's a nine minute, but you know, so it is. <laughs> Oh, don't, don't. Oh, no, don't. I was going to take a picture, but maybe back. I'm trying to, to video. Oh. <laughs> Shared responsibility, birds, pretty and fragrant, edible. Hot pink is up there, too. Hot yeah. pink. <laughs> and there was something else, but. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> edible raspberries? No. Yeah. No. I don't know what it was. Have your phone. Co-chairs. 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 Co oh, I'm uh, the video taping it, so it's actually in the class right now. It's, my phone doesn't have a camera. <laughs> yeah, because then 
we can see. Mind. And then my mind would get involved in how to What? I have a tablet for when I want to take pictures. Okay. Pause it if you want to take a picture. Do you remember last fall I told this long story about some family friends and then I was like, oh my God, I can't believe we just told that story. I went right to Devon and I was like, that story cannot be in there because those old family friends may just watch that video. <laughs> she cut it. So it was a loving story, but nonetheless it was slightly irreverent. So before we talk about the spiritual practice around providing treatments and giving treatments, um, I have one thing. Is it okay with you if I erase this now? Because yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I'm a public speaker and irrelevant information on the board behind you is a bad thing. <laughs> um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the readings. And I know it's a lot of reading. I don't know how to cut that down. Um, I'm going to not take total responsibility for it because some of this comes from the center's spiritual for spiritual living. It's their curriculum. So know that. Do the best that you can. But if I had to request that you read one book or the other, as much as the Foundations of Mysticism is the textbook, is the definitive book, I would ask you to take a closer look at Mark Nepo's um, 7,000 Ways to Listen. Because his book is the one that's asking you to reflect on yourself. Who are you? How are you listening to yourself? How do you recognize the divine wisdom within you? And his book is the one that gives you these simple little exercises at the end of the chapter. Just little things like look at your hands, you know? Or where, what is your wisdom lineage? Those kind of questions are so valuable to us. Where do you get your knowledge? Of, of God, of spirit, or of the divine, and how does that come together for you? So if you're struggling with the reading, read. let's read this one first, and I'll, I'll, I'll bring us up on the foundations, and when we have, you know, as that goes, because I'm a textbook person, but other people usually are looking for easier ways to read and to get the material, and I would say it's Mark. That's my opinion, though. Mm -hmm. For me, I found the biggest challenge to overcome was to really read Mark um, <clears throat> because I found that to do the exercises, I really had to focus. <coughs> I had to open myself up to memories and um, <clears throat> there was a reluctance. I'm sorry, I've got a frog in my <clears throat> throat chest that the stuff was in the womb. Okay, I think it's uh, <clears throat> But having set my intention at the beginning of the class, somehow, in some way, removed that obstacle that I was having at the beginning, at the end of last week, and then all of a sudden, two days ago, something shifted, <clears throat> and I was able to go on with Mark and do the exercises, and whether I understood some of the things or not, uh, it was really very interesting. Okay. Finding that this is, I mean, it's working, but it's work. It's not easy. It's not read and, and mouth that out. Right, right. Which is what um, uh, Mr. Goldsmith says. It's like, you can't just read this book, these mm -hmm. books, and put them down and walk away. And um, because you, you won't acquire the knowledge, because the knowledge is all inside. All of these books are just tools to go inside. Exactly. And so when you're ready, we go inside as much as we're able at any given time. That's that we're only as aware as the level of our awareness, right? And we can expand that awareness, but this is where we are today. And But how we expand that is by meditating and going inside and having allowing those awarenesses to surface. And sometimes that's can be really frightening, honestly. 
that is not always the way I want to go. And there's more than once that I'm sitting in meditation and I just start crying for no good reason. I can't even identify the depth of what is happening in my heart. All I know is that I am incredibly sad and I just cry and I let myself be there and then it's gone. And I don't even know what shifted really. I couldn't say, oh, I thought about my sister and blah, 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 and I finally forgave her because you can't, you can't label those events, right? They're only internal and you can only give power to them within yourself, right? When you, and we've talked about this a little bit. When you share those kind of events, they tend to dissipate and lose their power because you can't recreate them with language. So hold on to them and hold that power in your own right. Yes? Yeah, I, um, the, the whole practice and the, the, the writing, I mean, meditation is pretty but, but the writing of it, you know, I mean, reading is fine, I understand. Um, I've got a, a little bit different direction. I, I went to look at Lao Tzu and, and, and others take on, on, you know, the, the people we're supposed to be looking at other than the reading. Um, but when I go to the writing, um, you know, you, you set down your, your big things that you're grateful for, your gratitudes, and then you go back and you keep going with those. Okay. I. There has never been a time since I've been here um, that I can just write and not have it have to wipe my eyes so many times that I can't I can't see them, you know. And it's like, and it's just it just brings up things that my thought were buried or I dealt with or whatever, and, it just, and they just come out. Right. And this is this is not <laughs> this is not for the timid. Um, so it doesn't have, no matter how big you are, strong you are, weak you are, tough you are, you know, it is, is this just for me? I don't know if anybody else is, good, but it just it comes out. It it just has to come out, right? Because you it's like um, when when you know Barbara talks about the you know doing intentions for what you want, you also have to do intentions for releasing stuff, right? And, and for me, that release is just. Wow, um, it's just like a river. Right. And, and after it's done, it, it's it's. I feel lighter, you know. I feel you know, and I can I can focus more. And it's like. You know. Right. Good. So, how many people are doing the daily spiritual practice that they're requesting? Have you felt like there's been a shift? Dee's talked about a shift. Mm -hmm. Drew mm -hmm. is talking about shifting. You've talked about it. it. Is there other people as you're doing the daily spiritual practice? Whatever that is for you, you're taking some time every day. You feel more in touch with yourself? Well, I've been doing it since we did the prosperity class of December. So oh, right. It's not really like a thing okay. Like so doing. is this a, but this is a different type of, of uh, looking at yourself, isn't it? Or is it the same? It's all the same, really, I guess. I spend more time, more quiet time reflecting. Versus okay. the, the other, I spend more time doing the writing. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that part, there has been a shift in that as far as becoming connected, I would say, for me. Okay. Good. So, do people, do you feel comfortable with that suggestion about let's go with Mark Nepo, which is a little bit more emotionally challenging and less academic, less thought process than Mr. Goldsmith? Sure. Is that, sure. do you want, I don't want this to become like a therapy group, which it's not. We're about <coughs> learning how to be the mystics that we are. But um, on the other hand, there's a fair amount of emotion that's attached to that. I think. There just is. Otherwise, we wouldn't be so powerful. It's that emotion that makes us powerful beings. When you say, I, what I heard you say is that if you're running out of time, pick Mark over, but are we still going to be spending time focusing on yes. Goldsmith? Yes. Okay. Because I, I'm in, I think I am in the minority here that I, I found a lot that, 
I'm finding a lot more powerful, I have more dog ears in, in Mark's yeah. book, but for me, I don't, I don't like him by leaps and bounds as much. Yes. As, okay. I agree. As, uh, yeah. You don't like him by leaps I, and bounds. No. I, I mean, comparatively. So much better. Oh yeah. no, I don't know what yeah. that means. What does that mean? I don't it, like it him means, by leaps and It means. It means I find. I personally find a lot of his use of language frivolous. Okay. Um, I find some of the points he is trying to make. I don't want to say nonsensical, like, I don't get it. It's just, like, it feels like there are more better ways for me to get to where okay. he is going. And right. He's, I find it distracting. He's very poetic. He's an artist, right? He's a writer. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of information in there, like a movie. There's half of it we really don't need to see to understand the plot. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. But there are nuggets in there that are just right. mm -hmm. heart-wrenching in some I ways. I kind of feel that it's like when I used to go to church. Mm -hmm. And I always had this understanding with my pastor because he knew I didn't really believe the same things, but there wasn't a center there. So I would just sift through and take what I needed. and. And that's kind of what I do with this. There's, there's a few things that I, that I've underlined that were that were very powerful for me, um, but I, I just I get agitated at these questions, and it's it's like, it's, like, go back and remember the first time something or other. It's like you know what. No. I I'm I'm I I don't remember that kind of stuff. I really right. I really don't. I remember yeah. big things that yeah. have happened. I don't have a lot of emotional stuff that hasn't been dealt with. Right. And my that's just that's just not how my memory works at all. I'm mm -hmm. lucky I can remember how old my kids are for crying out loud. I have to figure right. it out every time. Okay. Right. The truth is, is that I did very little of these exercises when I read it the first time. I did one or two, and the ones I'm asking you to do are the ones that stood out for me. But I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Some will resonate and some don't. Just like every book, like, mm -hmm. not all of Ernest Holmes resonates with people, right? And Ernest, I can take him or leave him half of the time. But um, it doesn't change that what he says is can be profound to other people. And so I totally understand what you're saying. Let's look at some of the things that Mark is saying in the book for this reading, though. He's talking about, one, when people get lost on page 42. This is that one that keeps standing out to me when we lose our context. Is that the right page? They're also dog-eared. No, that's page 45. 45. Yeah. No, I want page 42. <laughs> Page 41 to 42, he's talking about being lost and losing our context. And he says, at the very end at the bottom of that page, he says, um, when losing our way, we frequently retreat and withhold or take what we think is a safer path. This often complicates our confusion. An old woodsman told me, that the reason most people get lost is because they don't go far enough. They doubt where they are and change direction too soon. Somehow, we are called to lean forward by what little light we are given. And um, that, I don't know why that, every time I read that, I just want to cry. Like, I don't want to give up, I don't want to stop, I don't want to go back. Right? I want to keep going forward, but and at the same time, I can feel lost in that confusion. And I forget just to lean forward, just to breathe and lean into that experience, which he also talks about. He talks about leaning into the listening and leaning into the experience, leaning into that light that is just that little glimmer and not turning back too soon. I love that. That's just me. That was one thing that stands out to me from this section. And, but then he goes on on 44, and he talks about bringing it into 
treatment, actually. So that we can't, he says, you cannot set bone until you know where it is broken. And you not, cannot set upon the journey of individuation, of becoming a whole person, until you know where and how you are divided. And even through years and years of therapy and years of heartbreak and experience and you know, all those old stories just over and over again that I'm trying to retell, I'm learning to retell in a different way as I move forward, and what, I, what I'm doing is that, that is, that's still there. Like it surprises me that those little bits and pieces still come up. And I can be totally divided against anything. You know, it could be driving on the freeway. It can be, it could be a student in my class at the college. It could be thinking about politics right now, and I just feel this, and it's like I can feel when I'm divided from myself, about, from who I want to be. And that's the point of treatment. It's not literally setting the broken bone. It's knowing the truth and the wholeness of the spirit of the person that we're working with. And when you treat for yourself, it's knowing the spirit and the wholeness and the oneness for each of you individually, as you know for yourself. And that, again, goes back to that point I was trying to make that I keep trying to clarify between the body and the head, right? We know this stuff, but if I was gone and my body was just laying here and they went to throw it on that table in the back, they're not going to throw my body there and then say, oh, and here's her head. Because your head is connected to the body, and I keep saying this in this kind of weird metaphorical way, but we're totally connected. These thoughts connect to the rest of us. And that's the point I want to keep making here is that when we say we are one, that includes the sore finger and the, you know, the hurt toe or the headache. It includes all of that from here all the way, from the tip of your head to the tip of your toes, you are that manifestation of the one. And that's what makes you a mystical being. When you bring all of that in and that power is emanating out, when you meditate, just like we did here in this visioning, that is being a mystic. And that's what he's saying. When we can set the bone because we know where we're broken, that's when you become whole in that moment, but it's an ongoing process. You can't put it, pick it up, and set it down. It's a process. Mm -hmm. So this is the, con the confusion of mine-ish, um, confusion of mine -ish. My understanding, uh, okay, so do I need to know where the bone is broken in order to know that it is perfect, whole, and complete? See, this is something I think in Science of Mind that there's some disagreement on. And Ernest Holmes actually goes back and forth on both of those points. Sometimes he says you ignore the condition and you go on. And you, you ignore the condition, know the truth of the bone, know the truth of the person as being whole and complete, and you move on. You treat and you move on. Other times, Ernest says, you acknowledge the condition, you see the wholeness in that condition, the perfection in that moment, and know the truth of the being, right? So, it's got to be individual choice. It has to come back. I think what happens with Ernest Holmes when he does this kind of, what we see as this um, declaration of opposites almost, is that what he's really doing is allowing us choice where we resonate. Sometimes we might need to look at the bone and hold it and say, you are perfect, whole, and complete. And other times we can see the spirit of the individual and know the truth there, and we know that we are perfect, whole, and complete. So I, 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 I got you completely, and the thing that I'm pushing against in my mind, not against you, is no. one of the things that really spoke to me dearly with Rob is his whole deal of, I don't want to know what's wrong with you, right. because by knowing what's wrong with you, I am limiting what there is to bring to whole, bring to perf the wholeness or perfection. Right. So. Let, let me just stop. Has, has 
Everybody in this room been to one of his workshops now, one of his evenings? Mm -hmm. David, you? I haven't been. I saw it. I saw okay. him at the celebration. Okay. Okay. He's a, a transforming energy healer. Mm -hmm. He works by laying hands on you, in a sense. But okay. So right. So the so the end of that is just that the way that resonates with me then conflicts with the paying attention to something specific because it feels like then not honoring the rest that I am unaware of. Right. Right. Yes. I have a similar challenge with that as well. It, it's kind of like, do I set specific goals as far as I want to bring this or I want to do this versus what Barbara says is just know that I have a job that I'm paid well and that I like and those kind of things and not limit it to one specific thing because there might be something out there that I'm unaware of and if I try and limit it. So to me, it, there's a similarity with the same thing. And do it, I become very specific and say, this is the goal I want to achieve or do I just say I want freedom and prosperity and that and then be open to however that comes in. Right. Okay. But aren't we not looking for the block so that we can find the spiritual truth of the opposite of the right. condition? I mean, that's what, as a practitioner, we do. We try to get you to the place where you can find within yourself that that thing that the broken needs, bones, that, that so needs to be healed. Mm -hmm. um, and then we go to the spiritual truth, which is the positive opposite of the condition. Exactly that. And it's the quality of it, right? So you're right, on, you're right on track when you're saying quality. And you're right on track as well when you're talking about Rob's work and how that, that, that concept resonates with you. But if we don't, this is the other thing that Rob also talks about. He's not a healer in that sense, right? Anything that happens is that immediate transformation within you. And if we don't continue that when we leave the room, that condition will reappear. If we continue to go about our life in the same old way, that same old condition continues to reappear. What? Uh, well, I, I see it as, as you can do either. I mean, if you, if you treat for the whole person, the holistic thing, and you can do that 10 minutes after you treat for the specific book. But if you know you got a broken arm, you already know where the problem is at right at that point. You can, you know, if you want to do the arm, you know, it's, right. it's like, Hyper focus on it and then do whatever for the entire person. I mean, you know, right, so but the healed don't... arm is actually secondary causation, right. right? And so we're going to talk a lot about this stuff now. We're getting, well, now we're easily <coughs> moving into that concept around the treatments that, that we don't attract that kind of conversation envisioning because we're not dealing with it in the same way. Although we still deal with the same things. What do I need to release for this to manifest? It's the same thing. When, you're, when we're going for a treatment, when I'm going to a practitioner and they're talking to me, their question is, what would you like to see differently? What do you need to release to, for this to happen for you? And that, so I don't even often recognize that question for myself, and I don't know why, you know, because I don't want to. I want someone to walk me through it, I think, and that's just okay. Because sometimes we need love and support in order to grow. We absolutely need each other. So don't ever be afraid of grabbing a practitioner and making an appointment, even after your license. Man, I just think it's the greatest thing ever, honestly. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm on a tangent. <laughs> You'd think I was a commercial, right? <laughs> Get licensed! <laughs> but, so, what I think the metaphor is of that broken bone, it's an old definition that we carry. What is, what is old in us? What is that thing that's broken that we, we're, we're not fixing? What do we keep on ignoring in our past sometimes that we still need to look at again? You know, I feel like I have forgiven people, I feel like I have done the work, and yet something will crop up, right? And, um, and it crops up in a different way.
but it's still the same issue. And so it just tells me life goes on, life happens. That's what I tell my students. It's like, yeah, you have a lot of work to do, you're going to get graded on it, and absolutely I understand that life is still happening for you while you're in school. You know, you get flat tires. Flat tires don't just happen to bad people, they happen to everybody. And it doesn't really matter what your consciousness is, what matters is the consciousness when the flat tire happens, right? Did you cause it? Maybe you needed to slow down, like, like I often need to do. If I get a flat tire, I know it's because I need to slow down. But sometimes I think other people don't have that consciousness. And what is it for you? It's a different thing for everyone. And that's, that's, the broken bone is a metaphor for that, I think. And we can heal that, but it's a spiritual healing. The physical manifest once we're in alignment with divine spirit. So that's the trick. Does that help? Yeah? Okay. Because Barbara is kind of like home sometimes. Please forgive me, Reverend Waterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that on there. And I'll say, you should just watch the tape. <laughs> She's kind of like earnest sometimes. She'll be very engaged. And like me too in my own classes, I'm very engaged and I'll go off on this one track that feels right and it's good. And it's good, and then another week I'm off on this track because it feels right and it's really good, but it's because of my own personal life, right? There's no other reason for it than what's been happening with me and where my consciousness is. And sometimes my students at the college are like, oh, you're just amazing today. And other times they leave scowling. You know, like, <laughs> That's, you know, last week I told Barbara that you know, I was met her in the bathroom and we were like washing our hands. It's like you were on fire today, wasn't she on the platform? Yes. She was brief, concise, fired, impassioned, clear. And I'm not saying that she's oh. not like that. <laughs> <laughs> now about the oneness that's necessary in this first step of treatment, being aware of the divine, knowing that we are one with it, that we, we focus on that, that piece that God is everything, God is in the door, and God is in the paint, God is in the, in the spirit, is in the food and the growth and is in Mother Earth, that the spirit is in everything, and if that spirit is in everything, then it's in us, right? Then we too are that manifestation of that divine spirit. And that's, those are the first two steps. And so we've talked about that now tonight in a very pretty clear way. And so those are the first two steps of treatment. And um, this gentleman says that we don't, on page 25, this is key because this is the difference between the prayer that I grew up with and, and a treatment. That prayer in its true sense is a communion with God. It is not begging, it's not beseeching, it's not asking God. It is a communion with. And that communion with is simply knowing that we are. We are. Our being is that that we stand on holy ground and that we breathe sacred air. <clears throat> Each of us. And when that, that, sometimes that's elusive for me. And sometimes when I'm reading something like Mark Nepo or this, it hits me full force and that's why I cry. Because, oh my gosh, I am, right? I am that, which I'm struggling, you know, I sometimes struggle to believe. And sometimes it just comes clear as a bell just like that. Those are those moments I just love. And sometimes I'm often, you know, I can be a little scared of. But um, that is the key. That the treatment is a communion with God. And so we have the first step. Everything is God. And the, 
you know, in the abbreviation, you've all heard that, right? God mm -hmm. is, I am, thank you, um, I am so grateful, and I am over and out. That's the abbreviated version, but God is everything. So when we do those treatments and when you start practicing, I suggest you write it out. And they can be difficult to write, but once you get a grip on that, on that format, it gets easier. And there's two things that helped me with that before I, I wind up when I first started writing treatment. The first one was, what's the issue? You know, just acknowledge that condition. What is the problem? I don't have enough money. I, my right knee hurts, you know or I have a headache, or my car's not working. Just acknowledge the condition that you want changed. And then, acknowledge the condition, and the second step is to, what do I need to do to release it? Just like that, just like in the vision. Because what that did for me was let me go into the, the, what I need from spirit in order to change it. So if I needed to do something about my right knee because it aches and it hurts and stuff, and what is that? What do I need? What's the emotional baggage carried in with that? Is that I need to just take care of myself. That's a, at its basic, right? If it's my car that I want a new car, is it that I need a luxury vehicle or is it that I would just want a, a, a safe ride because I drive you know, 50 miles a day round trip to where I work? And what is the truth about what is it I need? And I have to get to that truth. And then I can do the treatment. And so if I already know that God is everything and that I am one with God, then I know that God will provide that that what I need is already there. Because everything is God. I'm looking at Fran, who's looking down going, hmm, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. What do people think? Because we're going to stop on this point. Every, everything is God, then everything you need is right here. Perfect health, perfect wholeness, the broken bones. But we need to remove the blockages that are allowing that flow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so as mystics that you are, right? Because this isn't a lecture about treatment. This is, this is engaging you to recognize that you are that. You are that. You don't need a licensed practitioner in that sense, but we need community because community, spirit resides in community. And so um, that's what makes AA so incredibly successful, right? That's what makes, that's why we come to the sanctuary on Sunday. That's why we come to Barbara's groups because community holds that purpose for us. That's what we do. Dogs run in packs. Cats. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm, I'm thinking maybe it came to me. This, the first three things here on the spiritual mind treatment is condition, mental cause, and spiritual proof. Right. Is that what you were talking about? Yes. Okay. So the condition, let's say, is my knee hurts. The mental cause is it could be a situation that you're getting into the car too much. <clears throat> or it could be that I don't want to bend my knees to somebody else. It could be an okay. emotional Okay, could be true. Mm -hmm. um, so you can pick any cause you want, but that is a mental cause, not a conscious. Well, it is a consciousness. And the spiritual truth is just that everything's God, everything's good, there's nothing wrong, everything's perfect. Right. Is that, am I getting that clear? I, I would say yes. For me, I, I would change it, just, just for me, because I, each one of us are individual in that. Your knee oh. might be different than my knee, and your mean, and mine well, is. Well, that would be the but cause. For me, so. it was, literally, it was that not taking, it's not that I don't take care of my body, because overall I do. I needed new shoes, and I haven't bought new footwear in a long time. And I realized that part of my issue with my knees starting to hurt again was that I wasn't taking care of myself quite literally by buying myself new shoes because I felt like I couldn't afford them. Okay, right? So there was something I would prefer instead. And so what was it that I had to treat for? It wasn't for health for my knee. 
It wasn't for new shoes. Expanded consciousness. It was an expanded consciousness of money, knowing so I have all I that, need. In that way, then, we're not focusing on the problem. I'm not focusing on the hurt need. Right. I am saying, what do I have to release? That's right. That point. You've already acknowledged yeah, so, the hurt so need. That's right. That's to what you're talking about, Mike. You know, so it's not focusing on that. At least I'm, I'm beginning, that's what I'm beginning to feel. It's acknowledging the condition, but moving beyond it to the truth. <laughs> no, because it's the cause, it's that second step. Right. It is the stumbling block for me. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> I'll take that. I think that's good. Does that make sense to pe people? Yep. Does that make sense? Drew is looking at me blankly? Or well, just I'd like to disagree <laughs> just to be different, but yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> be different, Drew. You can be different. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's fine. It's because it's her issue, so we really can't right. answer for right. her. That's right, right. That's right. <laughs> and by talking, <laughs> by having your input, I'm getting clarification. I know, mm -hmm. but we can't say if you understand it because we don't know how your head works. No, so. but, but <laughs> and part of community and part of seeking right. out a practitioner is to help someone help you recognize that truth. Yeah. Do a series of questions and things. Yes? So did you meditate on did it just come to you that you needed new shoes or did I'm still I'm serious that was because that was the solution to the problem so I need new shoes but, but that's an excellent question because I write out meditations I write out the treatments and so my knee hurts the mental cause is why does my knee hurt and so I'm look focused on my knee and as I'm doing the treatment and I'm meditating it's like well, one thing I could use, you know, I need new shoes, you know. And then I go, oh my God, it's, that's why. <laughs> it just kind of comes out of the blue and I go, why haven't I bought new shoes? And it's like, because I'm doing other things with my money. I go out to eat. I, I do a lot of things. And honestly, it's, at this point in my life, it's not because I can't afford them or I don't feel like that. But there used to be that time. I think I got out of the habit of buying those types of things for myself when I couldn't when I felt like I couldn't afford them, right? There was a time not that long ago, my first year of prep training, I went as far and only to places where I had enough gas to get to. I could get to work and home, and could I get to the center? And if I didn't feel like I had the gas to get to the center on a Sunday morning because I had to go to work Monday, I didn't come. Because that was my awareness of my limited awareness of, of my money situation at the time. And, that's changed for me. I don't have that any longer, thank God. But, <laughs> hallelujah. That's what it is. But that was, that was a difficult time in my life, mm -hmm. for sure. I would carpool everywhere I went. You know? I would meet people at Petco, because I didn't want people to know, right? And I didn't want to acknowledge it. I didn't want to focus on the issue. I didn't want to call someone and say, I can't come because I don't have the money for gas. So what I'd say is, hey, tell you what, we ought to pick me up at Petco and on Brevard, and then we'll go on to Swannanoa. We'll carpool from there in your car. <laughs> and they would always go, yeah, sure, that would be great. And so I would drive the two or three miles to Petco and get picked up. But I would, because I didn't want to focus on the condition that I had created. I wanted to change that awareness. So anyway, that's my story. <laughs> and that and thank you, Vee, for clarifying that. And David too. Yes. So I guess in my thinking, nothing external can be a cause. Is that correct? And and so is that really the a cause? I know we're, we're talking, we're using semantics maybe and verbiage and, and that kind of thing, but that is what we're talking about here. So, it, and I, again, I, clearly this is your body and how you choose and how you choose to relate to all of everything, but I'm going to use your example to help me understand. So, if, as you mentioned, when you you acknowledged the situation. Maybe then what I heard was your initial maybe mental response was it's 
to the shoes. And then you were led to something deeper, mm -hmm. which really is first cause, which takes us back to the source. See, it's so very perceptive. Is, that is, is it really the shoes that my knee was hurting? No. Yes, and again, I'm, you know, no. I'm just, yes. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get this, since we're having this conversation, yeah. just trying to get mm -hmm. this in my own mind. Because we were talking, and I had mentioned mm -hmm. that. I had something I was treating myself for today, you know, and, and, and when I was done, I thought, hey, either this stuff works or it doesn't. Get on with it, you know? Like, you're treating, but you're not believing that right. that might happen, you know? Like, you know? Right. So, anyway, that's kind of been a theme for me today. Right. So, um, th thank you for sharing your example and for the information right. everybody's been sharing about how we think right. about it. Because if, yes, because if we expand that, then you can see that my limited mobility was hampered by my limited consciousness of money. I mean, it's all connected. Yeah. It's all connected. Every every hole is connected to something else. It's all amazingly one. It's all one. Yes, Drew, and then yes. and then we're going to start winding up. Yes, as far as um, I've had this recurring thing of you know turning turning away from the condition and my brain goes well that's just ignoring the problem uh, but then again on the other hand it's like well if you don't turn away from the condition you're going to hyper focus on it like you always do and you're just going to run around and start like a squirrel on math and, uh, and worry about it so is that basically a form of that or or is that turning away from it you're not ignoring it it's you know it's still there, but you're hyper. You're focusing on what you want it to be, and what I mean is that. Does, does, does that make sense? See, and I don't have Ernest's book with me right tonight, on. where all of this is highlighted from property. No. <laughs> Thank you, B. <laughs> no, but let me say. Let me say this: here. is that it's how you tell your story and where you live in your story. That's my experience. If I continue to tell the same story about the way my upbringing in that same way where I end up, you know, the, like Barbara will say, you know, she has that word, I forgot it now, but where I'm always a victim and they're always at fault, then that's going to continue until I recognize the story for it itself, which is just a story. And it has no bearing on who I am today. I create right now, this moment, the new person that I am. But that stuff is part of all of that. And in order to let it go, you have to acknowledge it. You have to see it playing out. So it's how much, I would say it's how you dwell on that story and how much you live in that story. But you have to, I, I see, I think we have to acknowledge the dysfunction in order to move past it. Because so, otherwise we don't know what's on the other side. If we just say, I want money, but I don't know what having that money feels like, which Barbara talks about a lot, then if we don't know what it feels like on the other side, then we can't get out of it. And sometimes we can't get out of it because we haven't recognized what's right here. So, so basically, it's, it's uh, I mean, someone else, it's, it's acknowledging it, but giving it no uh, validity or energy. Right. I guess. And, and focusing on yeah. what your intent to You remove to the power from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did this exercise at a conference I was at, and where we we had to we had to line all of our shoes up against the wall. <laughs> and then um, we were assigned a partner and then we had to go pick get each other's shoes and wear them. And I had a big gentleman. I had a guy who was a big man, like like Drew, he taller and, and just broad shouldered and big feet <laughs> you know? and I had to I walked around in his shoes for an hour and he walked around in mine oh. and and it, then we had to you know talk to each other about what our perceptions of our lives were each other's just by wearing each wow. other's shoes and it was like wow how does a man like of your size move through the world you know, with this kind of gentleness that you have, Carefully. and yet at the same time, with some of your life experiences that has have made that it may seem larger than life, because that's what I felt like in those shoes—they were just larger <laughs> than life. 
And he would say things to me, it's like, you're so compact. You know, <laughs> all of your life is in this little body. Like, how do you deal like that, right? But it's the truth. We are, we are. When we walk in each other's shoes, literally, you can feel that kind of connection with people. And, and that's what, those are the stories we need to let go of. I'm not that compact. I am this. Right? I am I am this presence right here and as are you. And you're not unwieldy, you know. You're very gifted in so present. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one more comment and then we're gonna close. I know what was wrong with your shoes. Ah. <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna enlighten us? The okay. great big man and you your little shoes. Oh, <laughs> 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 and, and as we go into our offering this evening, 